Okay, so now we arrived to extract the network for uh, the world area we were analyzing. Uh, what we do now is extract uh, our basin. So usually, uh, you know uh, the uh, outlet of your basin, and when uh, in a JS way you know the outlet, it means that you know the coordinates of this point. Okay. Uh, then you can use uh, we use the uh, water outlet uh, component for extracting the data. Okay. So. What this component needs is the coordinate of the outlet of the basin that you are analyzing. Usually, you can retrieve this uh, from the network because the outlet has to be on the net. And usually, you have, uh, for example, a gauge station if you are lucky, uh, so you know the coordinate of that gauge station. Uh, my question here. Yeah. One See? question. Yes. The projection of the first uh, Ashi or uh, Dam yes. is maintained the same for the all the. Uh, yeah, automatically. automatically. Okay. So the coordinate should be. In the same way. projection in which you find. Okay. Uh, okay, so we know that two input, x and y this characterizes the uh, uh, coordinate x and y of your uh, outlet and then we need uh, three components the first one read the drainage direction of the world area the second one executes the command so it means that the component that we are executing which is a uh, uh, water outlet and finally, we have to write the raster map that we are creating. Because the output of this command is a mask, uh, which has uh, number one inside for the pixels that are inside of your river network, and no value for the pixels that are outside of your basin. So number one will be pixel inside the basin, no value will be pixel outside your base. So, uh, as you probably remember, uh, the last uh, drainage direction that we compute uh, were the output of a mark out which are the drainage direction computed with the method of Orlandini, corrected, marking, flagging the outlets with 10. The name of those uh, directions are mark outlet because those are the output of mark outlet. Okay, do you have a question here? It's fine? Okay. Then we have to uh, insert the coordinates of your outlet. And so as you can see, you can change on top of this in file your number and the script automatically puts in the right place. So if you have uh, another basin with other coordinates, you don't need to go down and uh, correct the coordinates, but you just need to uh, change those two variables, x outlet and y outlet, okay? And then, the, the last things we need to set is, uh, as uh, we always did uh, until now, it's the path to which we want to write the map of the basin, okay? Let's finish with analyzing the last field, which is the connect. So uh, we read the flow direction and we pass it to the uh, 
mark out its component, and then the output of the mark out its component will be the input of the writer raster or the raster writer. So if this is uh, so, is this clear? Would you like? Uh, do you have questions? Excuse me, I didn't understand the x outlet the number. Uh, how this one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, from where we get the uh, values? Suppose that we have this uh, big area, no? And, but we, this is uh, the network all over our area. But we are interested just in a river, one basin. Suppose that our basin is this one, okay, this one here. From where I get the coordinate, the outlet is usually uh, at the end, no? Or if it is again station is uh, in the middle, you can see the course here, uh, okay? So then you can get the coordinate. Let's assume your outlet is here. Uh, you can just query the value with uh, the information, and you get your x and y. Because you know that that is the area you are interested in too. You know the, the coordinate of the basis and you take it. Pay attention that water outlet works as far as you provide pixels that are on the network. Because if you provide uh, the pixel value of this one, so uh, pay attention to this example. If you look there, you have number two to band one, here. Okay, number two means that the pixel on, over which we clicked was on the network. So the coordinates are associated to a pixel on the network. This is important because if I click here and I take the coordinate of these points and I put this coordinate inside my uh, simulation file x and y, <coughs> it will give you an error. And guess what it will tell you? Here we don't have network. Okay, so you have to be sure that your outlet is on your river network. So it's a river pixel, it's a channel pixel. This is one way to, to take the coordinates, but you can do it in any other Yes? Uh, what if the coordinates are geographical coordinates? No. Uh, all the tools that we are showing are all planar. You have to compute distance in the planar coordinate, you have to compute uh, elevation and things like that. It's all planar. If you remember, the first things I showed you was the uh, uh, UTM coordinate. Is it clear for you all or not? So, if you provide a lot long uh, digital version model, you, you won't work. Okay. If, you, sorry, if you provide a lot long coordinate for your outlet, it won't work. Because it won't meet them. Can you set a series of outlets? No. So you have to run it in parallel for every outlet? Uh, this depends. This depends on what you want to do. Uh, so you usually are interested in a big river basin, and this is what we are doing. So it's just delineating. Uh, so you are usually interested in, uh, and, and this then continue, no? But you are interested in just one big river basin. Okay, this is what we are extracting, all these big features now. But this doesn't mean that will be your computational domain. No. This is just your uh, river basin. Then for the rainfall runoff model, we will arrive to define small hills, for example, 
and those small here drop are your computational domains. Okay, and then you will have outlet. Uh, you will have output discharge in this pixel here, in this pixel here, up to here, 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 and then also at the output. Good. So what we are uh, what we are uh, doing now is just to define our main basin. This doesn't mean that we just provide the response here, because we will also provide the response inside this big basin. Yeah, but in the case you have two parallel rivers, for instance, you one have here and one here. Yeah. Yes. Or you can cross your section here. And you take also the okay. Thank you. It's clear? Yes. Any other questions? One question. Yeah. Uh, my output map uh, at the, the cost has uh, no data value. In, uh, the which one? All the output map uh, I obtained uh, uh, have no data value at uh, uh, the outlet point, uh, even if the dam. Value. Is it, uh, uh, the yeah. Yeah. So the, the output of this comma? Yeah. No, no. no. The output of uh, the previous codes of the, the, the network. Yeah. The previous yeah. was extract network. Yes, because uh, it will have two where you have channel. It will have no value where you don't have channel. But also in the, uh, in, in, in the last in the last pixel in the outlet pixel uh, at the the coastal pixel at the coastal yeah we will have no value. It depends on your dam. Yeah, but uh, when uh, the dam is defined, uh, you will define uh, your channel pixel still preserving the rule that you. Uh, provide. So if that pixel uh, at the cost has a uh, total contributing here that is higher than the threshold, it will be charming. Okay. Is it, is the, yeah. will, yeah. you want to uh, switch it out? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, I will check after. Yes, we will check later. Any other question? No. No? Okay. So if you run this, you will get your basin. And this is So the name of the map that has been created as the name of the river basin we are analyzing. And it will have one inside the basin that we are analyzing and it will have no value outside. Is this clear? So it means that from all that area we are interested into that river base, that specific river base. What is the map name? Uh, the name is the Cavone, which is the name of the river. Okay. Are you on to that page? Yes. Okay, so is everything okay? Yes. Okay, so now uh, what we have to do next? Uh, you remember we have, uh, we would like to compute, for example, the slope, the aspect, uh, the curvature, the topographic class, but we want to do this not 
on all over the uh, region, but just on our river basin, which is the black one. So what we do now is to start again from the DEM, cut the DEM using those masks. So we will have just the digital elevation model of the points that we are interested in too, and then start to get all those uh, attributes, slow, uh, drainage direction, <coughs> aspect, uh, sky view factor, and so on. Is this clear? Any question? Okay, so we say cut, no? So what we do is to use uh, cut out. So what we will do is to use uh, the mask of the digital elevation model that we get, multiply or use the cutout command that cut your mask, cut your maps, which is the dam, on your uh, mask, which is the black mask that we just computed. Uh, okay, so it takes pit filler, it takes the mask and it writes the pit filler just in the points of your basin, so just on the black points. This is what we will do. The script is simple, you can read it, and uh, uh, it's the same of the other. You have uh, a reader, you have uh, the application of a, uh, a component, and you have a writer that takes the output of the component and writes the result. Is this clear? So we can run it. And we will get the output. Which is cavone.pt. Uh, so this is the digital elevation model of just the area we are interested in. So now that this is done, we can repeat few commands that we already saw, which is computation of the flow direction, computation of the drainage direction, uh, network structure, uh, and then we can also see new commands, which are slow, fast, and slow. So let's see what what. Uh, do you have a question? Yes. Why do we use to repeat previous applications? Yes, because you need to repeat because of a uh, informatic problem. Because you you have your uh, you have your flow direction map already computed, no? Uh, and so you say you can ask, uh, but why? Uh, we don't, uh, why don't we multiply uh, the flow direction times the mask so we get the flow direction? Was this your question? Yes, so just why we do not cut directly this? Which one? Well, I don't know exactly where we can. Uh, so we, we don't have, when we start, we don't have the mask. Yeah. So we first compute the mask. And to compute the mask, you have to do the procedure with it up to now. Then one can say, but as we cut pit filler, we can also cut flow direction, we can also cut drain deal, and so on. But this may, uh, may cause some uh, artifacts in your, uh, in your uh, files at the border of your mess. <coughs> Usually this depends Usually this depends on how the algorithm is set. <coughs> but for example, most of the algorithm leave the last pixel outside of the of the region that you are cutting. This is an example. So to, to, do, to avoid all this stuff that are uh, algorithm dependent, it's better to compute two more maps again 
instead of uh, solving this kind of problem. Is it okay? Okay, so what is next is uh, flow direction, but this is the same script that we already see. Uh, we already have seen before. Uh, the, the only difference is the input. The input now, he won't be just bit filler, but he will be caloric bit filler which is the, just the basin, just the, the DM of the basin that you are interested in. And the output will be the flow direction, so Cavone underscore flow direction. Before the step seven, we could, uh, we could mosaic the flow direction with the pit filler together then cut out then we have already the network plus the code. yeah this could be one option but probably it's better to don't go in that direction and to compute again just the drainage direction on the cut at them okay. yeah. which is the one that we are doing yeah okay. but this could be another option i am not sure if it will work so uh, it's better to just compute those two maps. Two yeah. So now we know we already seen this file, you know, this uh, same file, which are the flow direction, and we can uh, also open drain deer because we saw it and run drain deer. and because we also saw. Uh, mark outlet, we can run mark outlet as well. As you can <coughs> see, as you can see the numbers, so here it's 0, 07, 0, 08, is not the same that we were using before because the input is changing, because the input is just the DM of the cutted base. So you can run also the linear and it's done. And then you can open a run mark outlet. I, I don't go uh, deeply in this because we just saw it there today. Yeah. But if you have any question, please let me know. And Network. We can run also the 11 one, extract network. So, if you are running this case uh, on your own river basin, probably the only things you will change is the name of the basin, which will be your basin, I don't know which one. And probably uh, you, will, you will create uh, another uh, output folder in the folder out, but the name of the new folder that you will create is not Cavone and then inside Geomorphology 2, but will be the name of your basin and Geomorphology 2, okay? Or Geomorphology or even nothing, whatever you want. Is it clear? Yeah. So Giuseppe, please, flow directions depends only on the topography? On the topography of the, the, on the, on the, of the dam? Yes. So uh, it's the same to consider. I, I, I suppose it's the same to consider a whole dam. Then you run for directions and then you extract your sub basin. And then you make your flow direction on, the, on just one sub basin. But it's the same because the topography of the dam doesn't change. Yes, inside. But on the border, you can have some problem because it depends on the problem in which you cut your ah, okay. flow direction. Okay. So here it's okay. Here we don't care, but here we don't know. So if you want to try, it's up to you. No, no, okay. But I would suggest to just do like this. It's a it's a finement of the water. Yeah. It's the border the problem. Inside it's completely as you say, but on the border I'm not sure. So we have the base, the river network. 
Okay, now it compute the curvature. Um, you you already have seen curvature, no? Yesterday. Uh, yes, you remember we. Would you like to say again a little bit, just to refresh the concept? Okay, so just to have the idea, uh, you have, no, uh, we, have, we start from the DM, we have the uh, Z, which is the elevation, which is continuous because we did the, the bit filler and everything is nice, so we can compute first derivative and we can compute second derivatives, so we call it FZ, uh, Fx and uh, Fy, which are just the numerical uh, derivative of the z between two cells that are far away uh, the dx, which is the resolution of your gradient. So you can uh, define your gradient, which is the number operation uh, of your uh, z, so it's, it's a vector. Uh, when we compute gradient in a few moments, uh, in a few seconds, uh, you will get just a number, which is the modulus of this vector, but just for you to remember, the gradient is uh, a, a vector quantity, so uh, it, it has also a uh, direction, not just a modulus. Uh, then we have the slope angle, which is the, uh, yeah. the square root and the, uh, inverse, the inverse of the tangent. Uh, and finally, we can compute also the aspect, which is the uh, arc time of the ratio that we defined before here. No? So those are just simple stuff, but the Will idea... Will we apply aspect? It, it, apply? It's very important, uh, uh, it's very important, for example, for me, for the snow, uh -huh. is uh, aspect that uh, face, facing north as a different... Uh, there's no evolution of... Uh, Rather than south, too. Yeah. Uh, so the evapotranspiration. Evapotranspiration. Mm -hmm. So, uh, aspect give us the... Um, which... which uh, the direction that heliscope loops for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But in the geo frame, we, we have this item. Yes. We, we will uh, compute now. Now, because uh, I didn't do on the world area, but we, I want to do those stuff only on the river basin that we are analyzing. Okay. Okay. So those are theoretically what they look like. And, uh, <coughs> okay, so th those are the curvature that are planar, longitude, as uh, the lesson of yesterday afternoon uh, was, uh, was a uh, what we need to compute curvatures, we just need P, the degeneration model, because those are derivatives of the, digital, of the elevation, and the elevation is inside the digital elevation. Uh, then uh, we have different kind of curvature. We have the longitudinal curvature, the planar, the planar curvature, and the tangential uh, curvature. So we read the bit. We provide the bit to the uh, component that compute the curvature. This, compu this component compute three output. And then we need three writers function that writes the three output. 
So we have a writer for the longitude, uh, longitudinal curvature, one for the planar, and one for the tangent. Pay attention that here I am providing the path not to pit filler, but Cavone underscore pit filler. So the basin that we just extracted. So this is the digital elevation model of our basin. And uh, here I will provide uh, the output path to the curvatures. So they will be like Cavone underscore C long, Cavone underscore C plan, and Cavone underscore C time. And where is Cavone? Cavone is here in, uh, in this part of the script where, unfortunately, it doesn't look like much because of the projection, but here we are accessing to a variable which is basic name, which is defined here, and the variable is this. Okay? We put Cavone and Pit Filler, no? We did the same here with Cavone and Pit Filler. Yeah. Okay, so in order to uh, avoid oh. for you to write four times Cavone, you just write once on top. And then we accept defining this variable by its name. And then we access to that variable through the symbol uh, string, carving, carving break, and then the variable name. Okay? So you just modify on top, and you don't have to care about the syntax. Is it clear or I repeat this? Could you use that, for that logic for the in order and out order? Instead of writing Cavone and put spacing it in if that line is on top of that? Yes, but if you perform the geomorphological analysis for five basins, then you will have Cavone, and then you will have another basin, and then you will have another basin. So you will have. Uh, you can use the same file for different bases, just changing the name of Cavone. Yeah, but probably he was asking, can I put Cavone directly in output form? No, I meant ah. uh, in the in folder or out folder, instead of writing Cavone, just put... Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. So the answer is yes. Clear? Or less? Okay, then we can run and visualize the code. Which one? We can open the lenser one. Run and show. It doesn't do. So you, you can image, for example, that from here the river basin is in uh, where it is very gray, and uh, and the curvature at the outlet of the basin is uh, quite flat, let's say. So you have this gray here. This is the outro coming So if we remove this. Because you have one map open behind. Yeah. When yeah. like the last cell on the border, it doesn't have a curvature, does it? Because uh, to, to compute something, you need uh, 
the cells, surrounding. yeah, because the last cell is not the surrounding that you cannot define them. And from here derive all the problem about the how, uh, the cutting the drainage direction. Ah. So it's better that one compute again. <coughs> okay, then we can compute the aspect. just reading the digital elevation model and uh, writing the yeah. So you can run it, then you can load it in QGIS and see how it looks like. It will create the Cavone aspect. And uh, an aspect, okay, not in this demo, which is very coarse, uh, but usually aspect can give you an idea of the three-dimensionality of uh, the basin. No? So, for example, if you have um, a DM map, you can put the DM on top, and you can uh, just shade it a little bit, and so uh, you, you can visualize a little bit of 3D uh, way. Okay, I, I give you the idea, no, it's not important. Uh, okay, so we can go further. The gradients is more or less the same concept, and we saw that the gradient is just the modulus, otherwise we have to provide uh, the, uh, also the other component of the vector because it's a vector we just provide the intensity the, the modulus of the vector okay uh, and we can run it it's the same concept of slope and curvature and uh, it just reads the digital relation model and write you have a question? Okay, slope is also important. It also depends on uh, the uh, pit filler and the flow direction. And then uh, we provide this two output. We run the mod, the common, the component slope. And we write Cavone underscore slope. And we will get something like this. see the flatter area which define your river network this is it's slow it's slow yeah i will say too fast the aspect the aspect was yes but do you want to see how it looks huh? what it does again yes it's just compute and along the y-axis and then you use it to compute uh, the aspect as the ratio between the uh, y-axis partial derivative and uh, the x-axis and in practice it's show, it is showing you uh, the angle so you see it's uh, it's um, from 
it's an angle, and then it shows the angle, the orientation on which your snow is moving. The orientation of this. Yeah. Of each, of each pixel. Of each pixel. Because uh, it represents that pixel, which orientation? Which direction is facing to the other. If, if you have the gradient, it computes the inclination of the angle of the gradient. The gradient is a vector, okay? So, if you have the gradient, it computes the slope of this uh, vector. And then, it's an angle in which the, uh, you can also see that uh, the zero is zero when the gradient is at least, and then it goes clockwise. So the, the number that you get, it's an angle. This angle uh, varies between zero. Uh, it is in gradient, so three uh, point and uh, it is uh, zero is in east, and then it is uh, counter. Like the German standard. This for the S For the S yeah. Yes, yes. So it's like this, and then it's going like this. So if it is zero, it's facing this. Otherwise, it's facing northeast. Otherwise, okay. So it's like which direction is facing the slope is facing in yeah. that pixel. Is the inclination of the is the inclination of the uh, gradient for of the vector gradient because the gradient is a vector. Okay. So that vector is an inclination, this vector is longer, so you can measure this in. No, no, no. They are all independent. So you can compute first the gradient and then, because you don't see that it computes the gradient. The only input you need is the digital regression. You don't need the uh, Do you have any other questions? Do you want to stop? Do we have a break or we go? Okay, uh, let's do topographic plus and topographic index, and then we can stop a little bit. Uh, topographic plus provides bsktc.sim 16. Uh, which one we escaped? Okay. I, I probably just forgot. Slope, we no. did. 16? Yes, topographic class. Okay. Now we are here. And if you remember the, the lesson of yesterday, yes, here. From the curvature, you can compute a classification of your. Uh, of your uh, class, of your pixel, that could be uh, convex, for example, convex, and then we could have convex divergent, convex parallel, convex convergent. Okay. Then we can have planar and planar divergent, uh, planar planar, which is just planar, and planar convergent. So what the code does is to give the for each of your pixel to classify according to this class. So this is a nine uh, classification. You have nine class. The algorithm also provides you a tree classification. So with three class, which is just planar, concave, and convex. Okay. We print out both 
the nine and the three classification. Uh, and then we can analyze just the trees because, uh, yes, I think it's more useful and makes more the energy. So if we run it, we get both the output. You can open it both. <coughs> we, okay. Uh, so how, how it does? Uh, you can see that it receives also two thresholds. Uh, how it works? If the curvature is positive or is negative, we are sure it is concave on convex. Uh, if the curvature is zero, uh, it is planar. But how can we uh, define it zero? We define zero just if the curvature value is between a, uh, minus zero, zero, uh, 1 and zero, zero, 001. So we have a, um, something like this. <coughs> and here is planar, and then it's convex, and then it's uh, convex. Okay, yes? Uh, but uh, is uh, the algorithm works at the level of a single cell? Yes. Okay, so you can decide if the cell is a concave or convex? Yeah. Yeah. Looking at the algorithm, look at the, uh, the cells that uh, are around. Uh, the yes, to compute the derivative in the okay. point, okay. the numerical derivative of the z in the point. Okay. You compute the second one, and then you. And then you move on. And this is connected to the lens line. Yes, of course. Uh, okay, but I cannot show you now because uh, we are uh, registering, but later I will show you yeah, yes. one okay. thing we did uh, on the. Uh, effect of the water distribution uh, according to the um, Okay, so we get the nine class and the three class. That's why we need two output writer. Okay, one output is the nine class, very detailed. One is the three classes, concave, planar, or complex. We can open the three class classification. And we can zoom at you. And so we can see the planner, which are the black. And then the other one are concave. And the other one are concave. Uh, excuse me, how we can uh, have more this here? Uh, copy, uh, dragging and drop the uh, nine class classification. Okay. For three class, three main type, it is zero zero one minus zero zero one. Yes, uh, I, I probably see here. Yeah. So you see the nine uh, class classification. Sorry for the. Uh, so it provides you. Com this is class number one, for example, where it is convex divergent. Uh -huh. the, then we have convex parallel. Then we can we may have convex convergent. Okay. Then we can also have planar divergent, which is this one, or planar planar, which is just a plane, or planar convergent. Okay. And then so we have none class. In the other case, we have just three classes. And those are convex, planar, or concave. Okay? We don't do the other distinction. And that's why we have two outputs. One is 9TC, and one is 3TC. <coughs> I, I tried to float it, but I think I have to just stop the legend. The legend yeah. Yeah, I, How many values? Nine classes, so nine class. one from one to nine. Or? That's a good question. I, I suggest you to open directly the yes. uh, wait a bit the uh, folder in which uh, in which the the PDF we, we give you, I give you this morning, where it will uh, that it, it contains the codification of your class. Okay. Uh, Joseph. Yes. Please back to zero point zero zero one. Yes. Uh, 
So this this coding was for uh, three main classes: convex, concave, concave and planar, right? Yes. So zero point zero zero one for which one? No, 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 no. no. Uh, uh, so if the curvature is positive, so higher than zero. Uh, ah, or more than zero is uh, uh, convex. Convex. Yes. Zero is. No, no. Uh, Concave, okay, convex, yes, larger than zero. Greater than zero? Uh, Concave less than zero? Zero is planar? Yes, zero is planar, but to define the planar, you, you cannot give just equal equal zero, because otherwise you have really two pixels exactly zero. You give a range, range. Uh, because minus z between z minus zero, zero, 001 and zero, zero, 001, so... You, you see, convex sides is positive curvature, oh. concave sides is negative curvature. Convex is uh, less than zero, less than zero. Convex is less than zero. Less than zero. Less than zero. Okay, greater than zero. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, concave is uh, uh, negative. Okay. So this 0.001, this is the range that you are giving to Plona. Yes. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Why is the 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 curvature of the 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 No, no, I am not responsible of Plona. No, no, but if if you no no if you no no I'm joking. If if you load the 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 raster you create you divide for ten by ten each into each class. Yes. Let's go. Yes. Open, open the glass. 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 Open